Welcome back to Compelling Bytes. I'll be taking a look at the RectX 12 games that ran decently on my Intel Arc A770 and Linux setup. Satisfactory, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Ghostwire Tokyo. I say decently because, except for one game capable of using the DX12 graphics, AI. No other games I tested ran perfectly, or even great, but there were a few that ran competently enough. Switching gears, I've transitioned to Tuxedo OS because I had an easier time updating to the latest Mesa Git build than on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Using what pretty much amounts to a nightly build of the Mesa graphics library, version 24.1, we're at the frontier of driver development. The first release candidate of Mesa 24.1 is slated to drop on April 24th, 2024, with the final release expected on May 15th, 2024. Remember, the game performance you'll see today isn't set in stone. This Mesa version is a work in progress, meaning performance could swing dramatically by the official release. Yet, the takeaway is clear. DirectX 12 games are beginning to play nice with Intel Arc on Linux. They might not be on par with NVIDIA or AMD graphics just yet, but it's a game-changing improvement from a few months back when running DX12 games on Linux was a no part. Let's take a look at how these games perform, starting with Satisfactory. If you're not yet acquainted with Satisfactory, you can think of it as Factorio's 3D cousin. Launched into early access back in 2019, it's not just playable, but engaging. It supports DirectX 11, DirectX 12, and Vulkan APIs, with DirectX 11 support being deprecated and Vulkan being in an experimental phase. I'll start off playing with Ultra Graphics with no upscaling and FXAA anti-aliasing on. Getting out of the landing pod, we're getting 49 to 50 frames per second with a 1% low of 45 frames per second and a 0.1% low of 6 frames per second. The water here looks kind of iffy from afar, but it looks much better up close. Here on the bank of this pond, I get 65 frames per second, a 1% low of 45 frames per second, and a 0.1% of 12 frames per second. Note, according to Fixit regulations, every pioneer should have... Switching over to FSR and keeping the mostly ultra graphic settings, we see a bump in 0.1% lows by about 200% from the last time I checked. Watch out for the hogs. They are pretty vicious. A few minutes with these settings applied and out in a grassy field, I'm getting 56 frames per second, a 1% low of 46 frames per second, and a 0.1% continuing to improve to a solid 38. ...require no power and will mine a node until their inventory is full. Note, multiple portable... Oddly therapeutic, until it's not. Back to scouring the terrain, the frame rate ranges from 56 to 60 frames per second. 1% lows are at 48, and, and the 0.1% at 41 FPS with XCSS. Testing the game with DX11 led to some unexpected recording glitches. Interestingly, this also affected my initial attempt at recording gameplay footage of Horizon Zero Dawn and Ghostwire Tokyo. The totality of recordings for those two games ended up being this. 
Gameplay-wise, Satisfactory ran smoothly on DX11, hitting frames between 75 and 120 frames per second during my 20-minute playthrough. Despite these recording issues, DX11 appears robust and prompt for mainstream use, while DirectX 12 is showing signs of progress. This marks a significant leap from my first attempt with Satisfactory on Linux and Intel Arc back in January, where both Vulkan and DX11 struggled, and DirectX 12 didn't even start. Ah yes, just as this video hits your screens, Forbidden West will be making its grand entrance for PCs in just a few hours. Meanwhile, I'm here diving into how its predecessor runs on Intel Arc and Linux. While FSR doesn't bring the frame rate over 60, the 55 frames per second seen here is supported by a 44 frame per second 1% low and 25 frame per second 0.1% low for a pretty stable experience, at least for a moment. My previous attempt at recording was mostly of Aloy as a little girl. I had to return to this Lessons of the Wild quest. Not only was it oddly fun, if not a bit terrifying, but the blades of wild grass, the particles flying around, and the tessellating matrix in focus mode all seem like a great way to test the GPU. Okay, turning off the upscaling. CPU utilization is high, and it's the first time I've seen the 13500 be pushed like this in a game. Oh no. The watcher saw me. In the original recording I did, I got caught maybe five times. I wanted to make a montage of all of that. I thought it would have been funny. Here, Aloy reaches Teb and the frame rate is ranging from 42 to about 60 frames per second. 1% and 0.1% lows are in the 20s. So, what's the deal with this game's storyline, and what's up with the robotic wildlife? Did a bad scientist decide one day to unleash an army of mechanical beasts, trimming down humanity in the process? Or are we looking at a Michael Crichton-inspired theme park experiment that spectacularly backfired? Alright, moving on to Ghostwire Tokyo. Ghostwire Tokyo doesn't seem like my kind of game, but it's visually stunning. I got it during the holidays for free on the Epic Games Store, and I'm running it through Lutris. Yes, that's the same Lutris I created two tutorial videos about, showing how to set up retro games from good old games. Hey, we got places to be, kid. Yeah. About a minute into play, and I get a range of 43 to 53 frames per second, 1% lows of 38, and 0.1% lows of 7, with no upscaling enabled. I don't know if I want to ever actually play this game through to the end, but it's DX12 and it's an Unreal Engine game, and I intend to get to why that might be significant in a couple of videos if everything goes right. When I first tried playing this game on Linux in December, it ran badly under DX11. Things have improved significantly since, but I think there's a lot of room for improvement. Now, let's take a look at FSR with some noise, I, I mean sharpening, turned on. 
So I'm not sure what the intended artistic style is for this game, but without sharpness, it looks gorgeous. But even with the sharpness turned up, it looks more detailed, not necessarily worse, though maybe things are a bit over the edge visually in this mode. Either way, I can't stop associating this game with that one Sora AI video with the lady walking in Tokyo. Alright, I'll keep FSR 2 and turn the sharpness down to zero this time. Here, a range of 64 to 78 frames per second, 1% low of 36, and a 0.1% low of 9 frames per second. Last setting change, King FSR the first, and a sharpness of 5. In this last excerpt, I get a range of 55 to 68 frames per second, a 1% low of 38 frames per second, and a 0.1% low of 10 frames per second. That is, until the hospital door, where the frame rate stays in the lower 70s. This glimpse at DirectX 12 gaming on Linux using an Intel ARC card, in my case the ARC A770, has revealed a landscape of potential and challenge. The tests conducted on these games that ran decently enough highlight the strides made in compatibility and performance. However, it's evident that achieving optimal performance on this hardware-software combination currently necessitates a reliance on upscaling technologies. The driver improvements have indeed opened new doors for DX12 gaming on Linux platforms for Intel Arc graphics card owners. This isn't a final verdict, but rather a snapshot of an evolving scenario. With the anticipated updates and official releases of new Mesa versions, there's room for significant improvement, whether it comes in Mesa 24.1 or versions after. The promise shown by these preliminary tests should serve as a beacon of excitement for Linux gaming enthusiasts, and serve as a call to action for Intel driver developers on Linux to continue refining DirectX 12 support. Hopefully, using upscalers as a crutch is only going to be temporary, and the driver situation for Intel Arc and XE products continues to improve. Thanks for watching. I hope to have the next video in the series out soon. Take care.